Hey everyone, Chip here, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to create this corridor. Space, it's kind of a space corridor if you look at it. Uh, and what I want to do is I'm going to be using a non-destructive workflow. So it means that you can actually go in and edit this to kind of to your heart's content as you move forward. Let's talk about what that means real quick. So this is all of the base geometry that we're going to use when we create this. This particular item is actually a, an insert that comes in from KitOps, and so uh, you're not going to have to build this. But the rest of it we're going to build for the most part. And, and the key here is I want to focus on the concept called speed modeling. But I want to take my time and explain exactly what we do step by step. So don't worry, you should be able to follow this. Although that being said, I'm expecting you to have some understanding of how modifiers work. So specifically, the areas that I want to touch on today is going to be creating this fabric area right here. How do we create this fabric and do it in a fast way so that we can actually use this for multiple projects over and over? And then how do we create these pipes and these cables? And how do we do this in a way that is consistent with our speed modeling so it allows us to create lots of different iterations and i'm going to talk a little more about iterations towards the end of this tutorial but for the most part uh, just understand that the key concepts that we're going to be looking at here are going to be this fabric and some of these cables uh, and this accordion kind of dryer vent kind of thing going on here so without further ado let's go ahead and get started okay as always first start off with our cube and we know this is about two meters tall so it's probably about the right size so i'm going to tab into this and i will hold the alt and control keys down and i get all these edges and then i'll say control b and i'll bevel them so i'm going to bevel them something like like this and then i'm going to just stretch them out a little bit so i can kind of get this kind of an interesting looking corridor and then i'll go to three and grab this face right here and i will hit the x button and I'm going to cut the faces out so now I have it inside and then I'll grab this one over here and I'll say shift D and right click and then hit P and we're going to separate that selection into a new one so our cube is going to be our corridor area and this right here is going to be our back wall okay and then I will go into my vertex mode select all of these let's just move it out a little bit and give us a little more room up front tab out of that I'm gonna give it a material real quick and let's add a modifier uh, actually before I do that let's go ahead and tab back into it let's hold the alt and the control keys down and we're gonna select all these edges and I'm gonna go into item and give it a mean bevel weight of one and then well, let's make it 0 0.5 0 0.5 and then and the reason why I use 0.5 is because I might want to adjust it later and I can go higher or lower without having to adjust the size over here so tab out of that add a modifier bevel we'll use the weight and you can see right here in the wireframe you can see that we've added this segments you either use one or you use a minimum of eight you don't want to use four you don't want to use two or three or five or whatever always use an even number always use either one or a minimum of eight if you don't you'll get some artifacting possibly down the line one and eight and there's some there's some exceptions to that rule by the way so now that we have this done let's go ahead and add another modifier and this is going to be a solidify and i want to go outside right so there you go something like this it looks pretty good i'm going to grab this piece right here and this is going to be the back wall area let's isolate this and tab into it and let's look at our vert vertices and let's grab these two and say J and these two and J and these two and J and these two and J so now I want to actually make these quads so what I'm gonna do is grab this one and this one and I'm gonna scale S Z zero and then merge by distance so I got rid of these two vertices right there and with this selected I'll hit control B to bevel it and you can see now we're getting all quads and then I'm gonna hit one and I'm gonna select just those vertices there and scale S Z zero and just these S Z zero and then I'll select both of them and I'll expand it up a little bit so I can get kind of an interesting pattern here something like this okay so now with this selected I'm gonna that's called the back wall I'm gonna shift D and duplicate it and then shift D and duplicate it so I have three new objects so back wall, this one's gonna be called fabric, and this one's called frame. Okay, and then let's just turn everything off but the fabric. We'll leave it. And 
So what we're going to want to do here is let's tab into this. I'm going to go ahead and just flip this so it's easier to see. And I'll go into three mode. I'm going to select everything and then I'll hit II. And I want to basically insert this about the, the dimension that I want that frame to be. Now once I've done that, control I and then X and delete these faces. So now we have just this. And with this selected, I'm going to come go in here and I'm going to add a modifier. Actually, I'm going to actually delete this one. Let's add a modifier called subdivision surface, simple Q. I'm going to make sure I show the wireframe, turn off optimal display. So if you can see this, you'll see it's already got one subdivision. So I want to keep on adding a few, something like this, not too many. I want enough that I can, you know, that's, that's going to basically work. So once I've have got this set up, that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to apply it. And here's really the only time I'm really kind of destructive. I'm going to hit this apply all button. And now I have all these. And then I can basically tab into this, select everything, go into my vertex mode, and then go select loops, select boundary loop. There it is right there. And now what I want to do is I want to put a weight on all these, but I don't want to do all of them. So I'm going to say control I, which selects the inverse of all of these. And then I go select random. And then I'll do control I again. And now you notice that we select the random. Now, one of the things I'll do is I want to make sure one is that hold the shift key down. I, I don't want any corners selected. And so if I have a corner selected, let's, let's select the twos on, on, on the side of the corners, but we don't really want corners selected if we can help it. So. Okay. And we can come back and adjust this later if we want to Actually, let me get this one right here. Okay. And, but I think for now, this looks pretty good. And what I'll do is I'll go into my vertex groups. I'm going to add a group and I'm going to assign this and make sure the weight is one. And now we're done. Now we go back into our modifiers and the first modifier we're going to add is going to be a displace modifier. And I want to go in here and grab, uh, we'll click over here to get our textures. We hit new and we're going to choose a clouds displace modifier and the size is 0.5 in here in the size so it's not quite as you know the, the, the higher this the smoother it becomes you can see as it gets really smooth so i'm going to just put 0.5 for now and then we'll go back into our modifiers list and this strength we're going to say 0.1 something like this so you can see it's just a little bit we might we can adjust this later as we go so that's our first thing here's our displace then we're going to add a solidify modifier and again we're going to push forward and so it's going to look something like this we want we want it to be you know kind of the size of a cushion kind of thing and with the solidify then we're going to add another modifier which is going to be a subdivision surface modifier now what's cool about this is that we're going to want to increase the resolution something like this and then we also want to make it simple we don't want it to make it catmill clock okay once we've done this then we're going to add a modifier called cloth and once you've had the cloth one, you click over here on the right and that little button will open up this control, this area. So basically this little button right here. First, we're going to set this to silk. That's going to have the most wrinkles. And then we'll walk through this a little bit and we'll go into pressure and we'll set this to five and shape. And now this is those groups that we just created. We're going to add that pin group to that shape. And then in, in uh, field weights, the very bottom one, we do not want any gravity. Okay, now once we've done this, I'm going to go, turn this off and I'm going to just hit the space bar. And when I hit the space bar, it's going to actually start applying all of this. And you can see as it goes, it's starting to inflate basically. And I can hit the space bar at any time and stop it. And I can right click, let's, let's shade smooth this. And one other modifier that we need to add at the very end of this is one more subdivision surface modifier. And we leave it at one and it's Catmull Clark. And there's our, there's our basic shape. I can shift left arrow to go all the way back to the beginning and I can hit the space bar again and it moves forward and I can stop this at any time. I'm going to stop it right about there. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead very quickly, go to kit ops. I've got a material that I'll include with this for the Patreon members, um, this material, but uh, it's this one right here and we'll select our object. Oh, we're in local mode. I need to get out of local mode. Kit ops doesn't work in local mode. Let's go ahead and select our object and add the material and there it is and you can see it's kind of a corduroy type material so okay so the next thing i want to do is i want to create this frame that goes inside this right so i'm going to hide this i'm going to turn on the frame and with the frame turned on i'm going to select it and we're going to get rid of this bevel too and the first thing i will do is add 
a skin modifier and this is what that looks like and so I'm gonna tab into this and I hit the one button and then hit a select all of these and these are the numbers we're adjusting the mean radius X the mean radius Y and the what short way of doing it is you hit control a and then you just start dragging and then this will actually drag down to a number where it works to, to kind of gets down into our little frame area and let's hit the fabric fabric button again see where we're at and that actually looks like it's pretty close and we'll grab the frame again and I can just get out of the edit mode and let's move it forward just a little bit something like that now I can do a lot of different things here I can add a bevel to this if I want to keep it kind of flat like that which I might want to do or I can add a uh, subsurface modifier if I want to make it more smooth and in this case let's go ahead and let's add the uh, subdivision surface and in skin we'll just want to turn on smooth shading and in our kit ops let's go ahead and add from the free kit ops metal collection we'll add a matte aluminum material turn off wireframe you get an idea what we're looking at so there we have our object and so now that it's shrunk a little bit I want to tab into it control a and then control uh, I mean hit a to select all the vertices and then control a this is just growing our object more maybe I'll add one more subdivision to it there we go so it's quite smooth tab back out so there we have that so that's basically the fabric wall that we've got done and here we are looking at in just regular solid mode sometimes with the textures it kind of makes it hard to see what's going on but you can see that it's kind of a nice nice effect we've got going on now I can also go in if I want and just edit these and, and the way I do that is I'm gonna take this and I'll go into my modifiers and I'll hit apply all now if I hit the tab button you'll see we have a very dense mesh here you know with this selected I'm gonna go into object mode and sculpt mode and I can scroll down here and you'll see there's one called cloth and Basically, you can just click and drag around here, and you're going to get some some cloth effects, right? So, and I can undo that. It's maybe a little too strong, but you get the idea. So I can come around here and just just basically touch up this just a little bit if I want to. And you know, if I'm if I'm doing stuff and it's too strong like this, I'll scroll back up. And I'll come to this right here, which is a smooth brush. And I can just come over here and I can smooth any of these. So just like that. So I can kind of get a smooth area. You know, if I, if I get too much, I got a smooth area. So that's just something to point out. It's very simple. Just go in there and just use those two brushes. And I'll we'll go back to object mode. And so now here we are. Let's go back into uh, our rendered view. And you'll see that, you know, we've got some a little more, a little more stuff going on. So that's the back wall for our capsule. And it shows you how to quickly throw together a back wall with some fabric. So before we go into the corridor, uh, let's take a look at this. This is the mesh we started with. And as you recall, we saved this vertex groups. And also, as you recall, we don't have any modifiers yet. And that's a quite a, a large list of modifiers we need to add. So one thing that you can do is, and I'll include this for the Patreon members also, is we can come into Kit Ops. We can grab this pillow effect here. And I'm going to just basically click anywhere. So nothing selected. And I'm going to basically add this insert. Okay. And there it is. And obviously look at our timeline. We didn't talk about this, but there is a timeline. You can see we're at 32. And if we go all the way back, so this is basically this object that I have saved as an insert in KitOps. And what I can do is I can select this one and select this one last and go under object. And it says link transfer data copy modifiers and now i can take this one we just inserted i'm going to go ahead and delete it and we can see that this now has all of the same modifiers that we had before you may have to reset the strength so that blender knows to take that displacement and then once we're done we just again we're going to hit the space bar we're going to watch timeline move forward we're going to watch our object inflate and we're going to wait until it's about where we want it to be hit the space bar to stop so that's an interesting way of streamlining this process just by adding this insert and then basically copying the modifiers over to this object okay next we want to work on our corridor hole so let's turn it on and i want to look at it in the side view and let me show you that notice that it's it's quite a bit bigger out here than it is down in here and so we probably want to fix that and the way to do that is we'll select it and we'll just say even thickness on our solidify and now we're in good shape so just want to point that out now with the corridor hole on 
uh, we're going to basically grab this back wall and there it is and I'm going to just move it out out here somewhere I'm going to turn on wireframe and notice in my quick favorites and really that's right here you can right click on here and you can say add to quick favorites I would have removed because it's already in there and I have the same thing with face orientation so and I'm going to tab into this hit A X and limited dissolve so now I just have these right and then I'll go into my modifiers here and I'm going to add a skin modifier with all my vertices selected in vertex mode I'll, I'll go control A let's, let's look over here control A and I'll move this down say something like that 0.02 looks good and then I'm going to E and extrude it now when I extrude it notice that I'm, I'm actually building somewhat of a frame here right so that's cool I'm gonna hit tab move this back in here maybe drop it in like that and then I'll hit tab again let's move this in a little farther than that okay and then I'm gonna tab on this and now what I want to do is I want to kind of look and see how this fits in with my design so it's it's sticking out a little bit so you can see that's that's kind of nice and uh, let's turn off this yeah oh it looks like it's working pretty good okay now with that done let's go ahead and take this again and this time I'm gonna say alt D not shifty but alt D alt D creates an instance so why let's move that out to here so we can see we have one here and one here so that's good so with these two selected like this then let's select the outside hull we have bool tools enabled in the preferences on our add-ons and I'll control numpad minus and that's going to subtract these out and you can see that we have successfully subtracted these out now I have parting lines one thing I might mention is that notice how harsh these are uh, and we can change that if we want to by selecting the back wall and just adding a subdivision surface on that you'll see that that radius that nicely uh, we want to turn this into smooth shading yeah so that did a pretty nice job and I might even add in one more on there and then that means this needs to be auto smooth also and that fixes all that now when you add bull tools it actually creates bounding box and if you want to get rid of that bounding box and see something else you'll go into the properties of viewport display and you'll just say I want to see the wire for instance and so now we show the wire for that you can kind of get an idea and if I look at that I may say this is too much I might go down to one more one yeah I think that's gonna be better okay now the problem is, is that even though this is an uh, instance it's not the same and so I'm gonna select this and then I'll go in here and select that one and remember our trick where we go object link transfer data copy modifiers and now this one has the same and I'm gonna go back into here and set that to uh, bounds viewport display bounds which is where it is let's power save this okay now I'm gonna add some lighting so what I'll do is I'll go over here and I'm gonna say shift a mesh cube and I'm gonna do this I'm gonna be looking to here and I just want to basically make a couple some lighting regions one here like this and it'll come up into the actual area like this I should just move it into the ceiling like this okay and then I can tab into this a shift D Y move one into here and shift D Y and move one into here and this middle one I think I'll make it a little bit narrower so I kind of keep these same borders okay and then I can hit the tab button and with that selected and this selected I can hit command minus and we're still doing booleans again and you can see we have these holes now I want these to be very bright lights so I'm going to select this object and I'm going to go into kit ops and I'll use the free kit ops emissives and we'll grab the white and I'm going to add a material to that now I've added material to the actual cutter so let's take a look at that let's go into my object it didn't do anything up here but if I select this object here come in here and I say add another material and make it that emissive white you'll see that that does a pretty good job for us pretty good shape now I'm going to say shift a and I'm going to add a camera move it to the gaffer collection hit five let's move this down like this and here Q let's lock the camera to view so we can see what's going on here I don't want to be to see a little bit of this and a little of that and it's kind of narrow so let's go back into our camera settings 
and let's set this to 35 or maybe like 25 and then we can move up yeah I think 30 pretty looks like it's gonna be the right one for us there we go Q I camera view and there's our view I'll now go into my world scene and I'm gonna basically delete the world let's show scene lights scene world so there's nothing there let's create a new one and this color we're gonna make it almost black okay now in Eevee of course we're not going to be able to see this but if I go into cycles let's go ahead and render this in cycles you see that this these lights are actually generating some light so let's go ahead and with that done go in here and that white emissive that we have selected let's make it 15 you can see it's starting to generate a really nice amount of light and I'll go get this other material that we used in one of our previous tutorials which is called the white mat and I'm gonna add that to the scene so that didn't get nothing was selected but if I come in here I can select the cutter that's why cutter and I can add that to here and it's gonna bounce around nicely and that's really kind of uh, our corridor although I want to add one more thing and that's gonna be I'm gonna add a channel in here for some cables or something like that so let's 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 take a look at that real quick shift a mesh just another cube and we want that cube to be scaled like something like this tab into this and hit this hit this top plane right there and i'm going to just move that in like this and then i'm going to extend it out like this something like that and let's make the color one something like that so the tab out of it and we'll go in here shift shift Control minus and there's the cable run let's go ahead tab into that again here we go so now <laughs> that's not what we want for that material so let's go back into here and let's select our box there and we want that material to be white mat now I'm gonna take that same box and I'm going to make a little connector area over here. And so the way I'm going to do that, first I'm going to Shift D, duplicate it, and right click. And then I'm going to go over here again into my properties. And viewport display, we want it to be display as a textured object. Now, interesting enough, if I render this, it's not going to render because look, this little button's not on over here. Also, let's look in our shading. And our shading, let's go up to Z, uh, and, and let's go into my R visibility and you notice that the ray visibility none of these are on and they have to be on so we have to turn those all on so once we've done that we're in good shape let's move this so now we have kind of a like a, a receptacle area that we can deal with as we move forward here's where we're at right now for our design let's move on to the next part where we're going to add some cool cables and stuff like that okay let's finish this up we're going to be creating some cables and some other details and I'll be using some inserts from my new design magic K pack it isn't out yet it'll probably be out this month I've been working on it for a number of months and it's basically a set of utilities that helps you model so let's get started I'm gonna go back up in here and turn these back off first thing I want to do is I'm gonna add a little detail object here and that object is really going to be focused on creating a little bump that has a way for us to route some cables and things around. So I'll go to my Design Magic Solids, and I've got this one right here, this box three. I'll select our corridor. I'm going to add the insert right here, and I'll scroll my mouse wheel. And I want it to be, yeah, something like that probably. And let's probably center it a little bit. And then we probably want to make it the same color as that object so I can go over there and, and I've set this up as a shortcut also but it's copy material selected there it is right there so that works out good there's our object then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my design magic widgets area and I'm gonna grab this which is a custom text display and I'll zoom in here and I'm gonna add that insert on top of this now it's not gonna add and the reason why it's not adding on top of it is because it's identified that this was an insert. So instead of adding it to the insert, it's going to add it to the target of the insert. So that's not what I want. So if I want to actually add it to the insert, then what I need to do is select the insert itself. Let's go ahead and turn off wireframe and let's remove the kit ops props. Now when I add the insert, you'll see that it'll add it directly to this and notice that we have snap modes over on the right now right over here and i can use face if i want 
so here we have it so now I'm just gonna basically snap to the face here and there's our custom insert and now I can just go in here and turn off smart mode so I can actually select the individual elements of course part of uh, kit ops and let's go grab some of the text so the text is there I can tab into that And that's how easy it is to actually edit that little display. Now there's also, you know, there's an LCD display, and that's a LCD backlight, and there's, there's a, a, a digital display too. And of course we have all these other, other things that, that you can add. Okay, so now that's done, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about cables and the cables that I want to create. And, the, and I use a completely different way of modeling cables than other people. Because of the way I use it, I can actually go really, really fast. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. First, let's go ahead and say Shift A, and I'm going to add a plane. And then I'm going to name this plane cables. And I'm going to tab into it and hit A and hit the vertex over here and say merged at center. And there it is. And I'll tab back out. And then I'm going to grab this guy and put him over right about somewhere like this. And move him out all the way out to here. Next, I'm going to say, tab in here, I'll say E. And I'll move him here. Let's, let's take these and move them down a little bit, something like that. And then E up, E over, E back down, and then E all the way out. Okay, and then I'm going to tab that, and I'm going to say Shift D, Z. I'm going to move it up here because I'll use that one later. And I'll come back in here, and I'll hit Tab again, and I'm going to select these two and these two. And I'll right-click, and I'll say Subdivide, and I will give it each about two subdivisions. And then we'll start building our cable. And this first one is going to be kind of an accordion, kind of a dryer vent accordion chrome kind of thing. So let's go in. To our modifiers and we're going to add a bevel and we'll set it to vertices and we will set the angle to weight and we'll tab back into these and i'm going to select all of these and i'll go item and i'll add weight 0.5 something like that and i'm going to take the the, the the two ends and they're going to be zero and as you can see this 0.5 is what that looks like right there so i'm going to move this out just a little bit something like that and I want to give the segments, right now I'm going to use four. I'm, I use four for these others as well. But we're going to end up messing with this because we want this to be a lot higher resolution for this accordion effect. There's our basic path that we're going to be using. Now I'm going to tab into this again and I'm going to add a modifier, which is our famous skin modifier. Hit A and then Control A and let's move it down. And let's go to the side view and see where we're at. Yeah, it looks like we're pretty close to inside. So we're in pretty good shape right there. Let's maybe drop these down a little bit. And then say control and say A, control A, and let's move it just a little bit smaller. And move it a little bit farther down. And then we're going to grab and do a subdivision surface also on top of it. And now when we look at this, that's what we have. And what I want to do is take the skin and say smooth shading. And I'm going to go back into here and we're going to look at this and we're going to see all these different little, little lines that are going through it. And I want to actually add a lot more of those. So I'm going to add by doing this, by adding here and by upping this, I'm going to get more of that. I can also go in here and, and just adjust this. So that's going to give me a little more, although be careful because I can see some are cutting out. So this one and this one might want to get a little bigger like that. And this one and this one, or this one, same thing. Uh, and we might actually select two and, and say uh, subdivide this and subdivide that. That seems to work pretty good. Subdivide, that works good. Subdivide. Oh, that doesn't quite work as well as we would like. So let's take and move this out farther. There we go. That works. And then maybe, maybe take this one, move him out, and select those two, and subdivide. So now 
you can see that we've got a lot of geometry in here and that's really important for us so now with that done let's tab out of this and let's go in and let's add a displace modifier and my strength is going to be 0.01 for now we're going to need a texture for this thing right so we'll say new texture we'll go over here and this new texture is going to be clouds but we're going to make clouds really small like 0.05 now you can start to see that they're starting to create a displaced map on top of this and it's starting to actually look it looks pretty good so i'm going to go back into here and for the strength i'm going to say 0.02 maybe 0.03 so i can start to add add some strength to that you can see how that works and once i've got that done then i'll just go into my kit ops and my metal and i'm going to grab a chrome and i'm going to add that material to that and i'm going to come you know and you can see that we have that shiny chrome now as that kind of maybe I, maybe I, maybe i make it aluminum there you go make it aluminum kind of an aluminum vent hose of some kind so that's how we did that now i can continue if i want i can continue to add more detail by just using these buttons here and subdivision you know you can see as i add subdivisions it gets it gets kind of crazy but it, it, it works good so so that's that so let's let's go ahead and continue forward so now that i have that i'm going to grab this and again we'll add a bevel modifier and we'll do vertices and we'll do weight and then i'm going to hit tab and i'll select all of these and i'm going to give them a 0.5 and the segments here are going to be four I know I said always use eight or one, but this is different because we're going to be adding a lot of geometry. So, okay, so I'm going to add this. I'm going to drop it down in here on top of this like this. And we'll probably move it over here like so. And let's go ahead and move this, change this a little bit. And we're going to add a another skin modifier. Control A, move that down. Control A. Control A. I want this to be a real tiny kind of a cable. And I grab these two and move them down. And they can actually get larger. So something like that. And these can get larger too. In fact, I can take the whole thing and just go like this. So I can get it quite a bit larger. So it's a little more like a cable. Okay, so now tab out of this. Look at it. We're going to go ahead and kit ops. And I'm going to go to the special mats. Again, part of the free kit ops free mats and add this rubber to it and there we have the rubber one now what's really cool here is i can tab into this and i can select all and then say shift d z so i've added another cable and shift d z one again i put another cable right above that one and shift d z again another one above that one shift d z and i'll bring some down below uh, below here that might go through this box of some kind so I might just take that and then shift the Z and bring that down right in there so like that now the other thing that's kind of neat about this is watch this I can go in and let's take this and hit the L key oops let's take this and hit the L key so we have that one and I'm gonna control a and I'm gonna make that one larger I'll just add a subdivision surface by the way we need to do that in here and we'll make this smooth shading so i made this one uh, quite a bit larger and this one i can make it larger too control a l and you know i can i can you know move these around i can do all kinds of interesting things with them so this one right i might take this and move it down so that it goes straight through and i might take this one move it down and these two i can say control a l and i'm making these look like they're some kind of junction right there they're like a, a, a junction box uh in fact i can take that subdivide uh, subdivide so and i just need to take these and i keep playing with the web bevel weight so i can make sure that i get the right size on these guys like this that bevel weight's too high okay so now so now if we look at this from the side view you'll see that this is a little these have gotten bigger right there 
and they co go right in like that. So there you can see we've got our cables uh, all set and done. Now I want to add a few cable holders and let me show you how we do that. So I'm going to grab one of these points, any one of them, shift D and let's just G move it around and then hit P and we're going to create a new object out of it. And instead of cables one, I'm going to call it cable holder. Okay. And then we'll tab out of this and select it and let's go to this view tab uh, let's uh, get rid of this one and this will leave the bevel alone but we'll grab this and we can see what we want to do so we'll say G we'll move it right about here E X out to here E Z down to here E X over to here E Z down to here E X to here, E Z down to here, E X to here, and let's hit the F button and the F button. We have a face here. Whoops. Face, there we go. We have a face there. And then we just start taking these guys. Let's take these two, or these two. Let's expand that out a little bit. Maybe make this come in a little bit. And let's add a little, a little here. This is going to be eight now. Add a quick little solidifier, which is good. And we'll shade smooth and auto smooth it. And with this selected, Shift S, Origin Geometry. Let's move it in. And I want to put this right smack dab in the middle here like this and i'll move it out just a little bit like this i'm gonna tab into it and now the great thing about this is that now all i need to do is literally just you know just grab and edit these little vertices and that's that's pretty much it and i've got my little bracket so i can continue to edit this so i'm going to go ahead with this tab out of it and shift y and move one right into here Shifty Y, move one into here. Shifty Y, move one right over to here. And we should be good. Now, what I want to do is let's look at these two that one and that one. And they need to kind of come down a little bit. So I'm going to tab into those and I'll select these three and or these four and these four. And I'll just move them down. Just move them down so they seem like they fit. And that looks like it works pretty good. So we're in pretty good shape there. Lastly, I've got this bulkhead area over here that I really kind of need to do something about. Tab and uh, three. Let's take this and let's move this down like something like so and move it in. And let's move it. Let's come out out E. Something like this. Move it out. I'm going to add a modifier, a bevel modifier to this. And let's give it eight and let's say shade smooth. Oh, and let's control a scale. And now we just need to auto smooth. Now I'll go into my design magic inserts. And if you notice, there's like DM plus, DM minus, DM plus here are unions, DM minus are differences, Boolean differences. And so we'll go in here. I'm gonna grab this parting line. And with this selected, I will just say, Add insert. I'm gonna stick it here instead of the F for face. I don't want it F. I want it in, in, uh, which is none. So then I can just scroll down here like this. And do I want, is this what I want, or do I want it the other direction? Actually, this direction is kind of probably is good. So let's take this and drop it in here. Maybe scale it a little more and stick it in here like this have it come out so and if I want to I can go in here and say tab and just like these cables and this other these other things I've these are set up so that they can be manipulated easily so tab into that and I've got a little add-on that, that comes with 
KitOps Free and KitOps Pro. And it allows me to kind of cycle through the different displays for these kinds of objects. So Command Shift Control Z. So you can see what, how we're going, we're going from a bounding box to a full solid to a wireframe. So I can, when I get done, I just put them in bounding box mode and, I'm, and we're good. So let's go back into here. Let's take a look and see where we're at. Okay, so we made these brackets the same color as the interior and we have one last thing to do and that's we're gonna put a decal directly on this surface here. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm gonna move on in here and we'll go in and this decal of course is coming in to the Patreon users as well. And what I'll do is I'm going to use this A1 capsule and with my object selected, I'll hit this add insert and I'll just drag it right on there. And once I let go, it's applied, but the problem is it's not conforming. And so what I want to do now is on the shrink wrap, just click on here and click here and now it's going to conform. And, I can, and the next thing I want to do is I'm going to actually go into the decal. So all of the KitOps decals, if you use batch, uh, or if you create your own, uh, they have these own, this material, and it's kind of a cool material because you know you can see it. It's gonna, it's got this grunge no no group, and I'm gonna actually add this, pull it out, and I can I can basically destroy the decal just a little bit, right, to give it kind of a worn, weathered look, which it might be. So I'm gonna leave it like that. So when I looked at this, I realized that I, I kind of liked this look better than the subdivision service look. So I added a bevel on this surface right here. I added a bevel 0.01 with three segments and then that again is subdivided. So that gives us a little crisper area right there. We also want to add a, a quick floor to this and we'll go into, this is part of the design magic series. So we'll grab this, uh, Arch 2050 and with our objects selected here I'm going to add the insert and let's hit the F for face and we put it directly on the face and then I can just bump it up just a little bit just give it a little bump there we go something like that right about there and then I can scale it and if I look over here it comes with an array and I probably want to add a mirror modifier. I need to add that on there, but the mirror modifier will be uh, added. And then we can scale it a little bit more. We'll scale it out. And we don't need four of these. Two, two works good. And let's see about here. Two works good on that too. So if I, if I go to one, that's going to finish our design. So people ask me, why do you do things the Nitrox 3D way, which is really using a lot of modifiers. And I've got a couple videos on that. You can check them out here on Blender Market. Uh, just search for Nitrox 3D. But let me explain to you a little bit about what I'm talking about. So this is where we left off. And so I finished this and went to bed. And I, when, I, when I woke up and looked at it, I realized there's a lot here I don't like. And so I started playing around. And because I've done things in a non-destructive way, I was able to very quickly generate this. So this is the same scene. But what I've done is I've made this area quite a bit larger. I thought it needed a little more emphasis. And it was very simple to do. If you recall, when we go into here, this element right here was what we used to cut through this wall. So as an example, if I click on the wall and come in here and we look at all these modifiers that we're using and I say viewport viz, turn those off and then come into this and use my add on and using this toggles VP display add on that comes free with KitOps free, alt control shift Z. You can see that this is the object that we use to cut into it. And so it's just a matter of stretching this object out and we have a different sized hole. And if we look at our new scene, we see I've grown that hole quite a bit. And it was very simple then to go in and select those polylines and I could duplicate them and add them. And then I took this box and duplicated it. And I used a little bit of design magic to add some little features onto here. I was even able to go in here and add these little rivets in this area using KitOps. And what I did is I just basically dragged and dropped one, two, three, four. And when I've done that and then I mirror it, they show up all over, right? So they're basically, these four are mirrored down to here and over here and over here. And KitOps has the ability to mirror with the click of a button. And then I've added a few more decals as well as just, you know, updated some of the other details in here. So that I was able to come up with something that I liked a lot more. And so that's the reason why I like this non-destructive workflow is because it enables me to very quickly make edits and iterate through my design so I can come up with a better design at the end of the day. 
And there we go. And that's really it. So this is the uh, kind of culmination. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was a fun one to make. I especially enjoyed exploring some of the cloth stuff that we end up doing, as well as the uh, accordion pipe was kind of an interesting one as well. So I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully we'll see you online. Thanks. Bye.